Today, I'm honored to introduce you to Stephen Strauss. He's co-founder and board chair of Impact Dyslexia. Impact Dyslexia is comprised of a passionate group of successful dyslexics, parents of dyslexic kids, and educational leaders. Stephen, welcome. Thank you very much, Don. Thanks for having me. So like you, it never ceases to amaze me how little awareness there is about dyslexia, even though it was first documented 140 years ago. What do you want our listeners to know about dyslexia? Yeah, it's a great uh, question, Don. And what I would tell, uh, what, what I like to tell everyone is that um, I really feel like uh, dyslexia is a double-sided coin. And I think this concept is really captured in the tagline that we have for Impact Dyslexia, which is that we are a new nonprofit for parents focused on empowering the gift of dyslexia and creating bold solutions to the dyslexia crisis. What I love about that is it captures the contradiction that is dyslexia. Now, the technical definition of dyslexia is a weakness in decoding, et cetera, and it leads to reading challenges. But the reality is, is that dyslexics really have superpowers. They uh, tend to be creative, big picture thinkers, tops down problem solvers, and have visual spatial strengths. And some of the most impactful people in history, you know, the, big, made the people who've made the biggest contributions to human culture and uh, development have been dyslexics. You know, uh, the list is uh, incredible. Da Vinci, Galileo, Newton, Michelangelo, Mozart, Beethoven, uh, you know, Franklin, Edison, Bell, and, and you know, more recently, uh, Ford, Einstein, Disney, Jobs. You know, it's just an incredible list. And so um, our dyslexic students and our dyslexic adults, um, you know, all have incredible opportunities to make real significant contributions to society. And, and frankly, some are, are uh, geniuses. But the flip side is, is that um, dyslexics are overrepresented in um, a range of, of you know, ills that cost society a tremendous amount and a tremendous loss of human potential. So you know, for kids who don't make it through school because they aren't identified as dyslexic, they aren't supported emotionally, they aren't taught in a way that they can learn, um, you know, they're labeled as failures, emotionally damaged, they're, you know, um, they drop out, they're overrepresented among dropouts and the homeless and the addicted and people who, you know, uh, attempt or commit suicide. And the most eye-popping statistic is that 48% of people in jail are dyslexic. And we spend a trillion dollars a year as a society in first and second order costs on incarcerating people. And so just because we uh, fail to address what I think of as the four root causes of the dyslexia crisis, we spend as a society $480 billion per year um, just on the cost of uh, incarcerating, let alone all the other social ills. So um, I think it's just really important to focus on all the incredible strengths that dyslexics have and make sure that we address what I, again, think of as the four root causes of the dyslexia crisis to make sure that we don't uh, you know, have these huge costs to society and huge uh, loss of human potential. Yeah, I, I love what you said about um, the superpowers because most dyslexics do have a lot of, of uh, great uh, potential, a lot of things that they can offer, that big picture thinking. However, the society and educational system is like kryptonite <laughs> that kind really of stifles is. the superpowers. So I'd love for you to share how your passion for dyslexia education and intervention, intervention began. Well, sure. Um, so um, I have uh, four kids, two, uh, uh, two of which are stepkids. And um, my stepson was identified and diagnosed with dyslexia in second grade, which is late. You know, ideally kids are getting identified by kindergarten or first grade but um, not late relative to um, what most people are, but uh, from an ideal perspective. And he got all the right interventions and he did um, you know, pretty well through elementary school and middle school, which is testament to his uh, you know, real intelligence because um, you know, he was uh, faking a lot of it, right? Because uh, he, he does have difficulty reading and things take longer for him. And he you know, 
wasn't getting enough of those accommodations and time. Uh, we know in retrospect now, but um, by the time he got to, when, when he started uh, his freshman year at high school, uh, he was no longer able to, um, you know, uh, keep up and, and the like. And um, he ended up taking a full year off uh, of school as he was, uh, you know, w as he was struggling um, with the emotional impact of, of um, you know, not being able to keep up. And what we, um, you know, have figured out since then is that in his own head, but not in, in, in a way that we understood it, um, he was telling himself that because he couldn't read and keep up uh, like his friends could, that, um, you know, he wasn't smart and even more devastating, um, you know, it was really, it was really torpedoing his sense of self-worth. And so um, my insight and the reason why I started uh, Help Start Impact Dyslexia was while there are a tremendous uh, number of, uh, you know, great people in the dyslexia ecosystem, especially in the nonprofit world, um, focused on dyslexia, there's huge holes in the dyslexia landscape. And, you know, I started asking, and I can articulate it much better now, two basic questions. Where's the nonprofit to help parents? Where's the nonprofit to help on the emotional impact of dyslexia? Because uh, what I saw was that really most of the dyslexia nonprofit landscape was focused on reading and supporting teachers and, um, uh, you know, the educational system, which of course is absolutely critical. And that work is the work that, that the, those nonprofits do is incredible and important. But, you know, there's that expression that, uh, you know, some things are necessary, but not sufficient. And so, uh, you know, when you look at all the social ills that are, you know, directly caused by a kid not being identified, supported and taught in a way that they can learn, like I mentioned, like dropping out of school, being incarcerated, you know, becoming homeless, addicted, you know, et cetera. All those are because of the emotional impact of dyslexia. And who is the, the you know, who's the, who, who needs to be there to address the emotional impact? Well, it's parents. And so that's where the insights for impact dyslexia came from, which is, um, you know, I was, my wife and I uh, and our son were really um, blindsided by the, um, you know, the reality that we had to be um, incredibly vigilant for the emotional impact of uh, dyslexia. And I was wondering, you know, why hadn't anyone warned us about this? And, you know, every, I'll just make one more comment, Don, is, you know, every parent basically goes through this once, statistically, because most people have one kid who's dyslexic, plenty of parents have two or more, but, you know, um, someone needs to be helping parents anticipate what's around the corner, right? There's big transitions that happen. Uh, you first get identified, you have your first meetings at school, you have transitions to middle school, high school, college, et cetera. And, um, you know, a parent who's going for, through it the first time and is emotionally overwhelmed and is trying to support their kid uh, needs someone looking out for them to, uh, to help them anticipate the challenges that are ahead and educate themselves and get ahead of them. And I think that will solve, um, you know, a, a big chunk of the problem uh, related to the emotional impact uh, that dyslexia can have. And that's what uh, we're really focused on and we're building programs around, which I'm incredibly excited about. Wonderful. And uh, uh, so Impact Dyslexia was started to, to help parents with the dyslexic children. So what, uh, what position on early detection does Impact Dyslexia take? And, and you can also include uh, uh, changes on the educational side, if you'd like. Uh, yes. So Don, um, in, in your first question, I alluded to what I think of as the four root causes of the dyslexia crisis. And, um, and uh, this question really touches on the two um, that are at the foundation of the solution. So the reality is, is that um, only 3% of the population, uh, you know, roughly knows that they're dyslexic, but we know through, um, you know, lots of scientific research that approximately 20% of the population is. And so if you, the way, 
the, you know, and there's, there's nothing unique about these insights that I'm giving you. It's like, this is incredibly well known within the dyslexia industry, but you know, how do you, um, how do you address someone's challenge if they don't know they have a challenge, right? And so the first thing that you have to do and the most basic answer to uh, solving the dyslexia crisis is that we need universal screening. And so um, the first thing that we were able to achieve with impact dyslexia, and we're based in Austin, Texas, um, and I know you're, you're just, uh, just north of us, Don, um, is uh, we were able to get four Grand Slam home runs into the, uh, the once in a generation education reform bill that the Texas legislature passed in the 2019 session. And uh, we were able to do that um, through this incredible confluence of events, but the Speaker of the House and the Chairman of the Education Committee at the time two years ago were both dyslexic. And so one of my co-founders, Shannon Maroney, who's a top lobbyist in her day job, but also has two dyslexic kids, um, you know, saw this uh, and uh, was able to work with other nonprofits. And she really led the effort to get these four Grand Slam home runs in. Um, but the, you know, the, the, the first one is universal screening of all Texas kids. And so from now on, I mean, think about the impact of this, Don. From now on, instead of, you know, the, the vast majority of kids going through school without even knowing they have dyslexia. Now, theoretically, if it's implemented well and consistently, which we're working on now, 100% of the kids who are dyslexic will know it and their, and their teachers will as well. And that's really the, the start of being able to support kids. So, um, and have their parents be able to support their, you know, their kids. And so um, that is, uh, you know, our first of our four um, focuses of, uh, of this, because, uh, that's again one of the root causes of solving the dyslexia crisis. So the second is, um, it's it's it almost sounds ludicrous to say this, Don, but um, you mentioned um, you know what ch needs to change among you know the kind of curriculum in schools, and I know you know this, but um, many people don't. Most people in the country don't. But science has proven exactly how humans read. Humans, not dyslexics. And I've heard statistics that say 85% of the colleges of education in the country um, don't teach future teachers how to teach reading according to scientifically proven methods. So you have this crazy situation, which is kids are coming into school and not getting identified as dyslexic and teachers aren't teaching reading how science has proven that all humans, not just dyslexics, have to learn how to read because while speaking is natural, reading has to be taught. And yes, some kids can pick up reading almost, you know, kind of despite themselves or despite teachers, uh, what, how they teach. But um, it's a complete continuum from those kids to the severely dyslexic who could never learn to read in any way, shape or form if they're not taught how science has proven. And um, the incredible irony is, is that our great grandparents and our grandparents and our parents, depending on your age, but at least in my case, uh, in my age, were all taught what's called phonics and phonemic awareness. And somewhere in the 70s and 80s, we lost our way as a country and we stopped teaching teachers to teach reading with phonics and phonemic awareness, which again, science has proven all humans need to learn in order to be able to learn how to read. And so it's a toxic environment in a school for uh, kids today. They don't know they're uh, dyslexic and their teachers aren't teaching them how to read in a way that they can understand. And so I know you know that, Don, because um, you, you know I, I know your story, you didn't realize uh, and get support for your dyslexia until you were an adult. And so, um, you know, I, I, since I mentioned the four underlying causes of the dyslexia crisis, I've already mentioned two, which is you got to screen every kid. You got to have teachers to be able to teach uh, reading the way science has proven that uh, humans learn. And so at Impact Dyslexia, we're focused on addressing those two root causes through advocacy, like what we did in the Texas legislature. And our goal is to bring that uh, to all 50 states. And then the other two aspects of the dyslexia crisis um, is the third one is just a complete lack of awareness and total misconceptions around dyslexia. And so uh, 
you know, if you, if you take the fact that kids aren't identified, they're not taught well, and there's just a complete lack of awareness and misunderstanding about dyslexia, it leads to the fourth uh, root cause, which is what I already mentioned, which is what really, um, you know, uh, impacted our household, which is the emotional impact of the failure, shame, and stigma that you feel when you're not identified, you're not taught in a way you can learn, and you really don't know what's going on. And so that one really is the culmination of the failure of the other three. And so the way we address the awareness and misconception and the emotional impact is um, through campaigns and uh, support that we have for parents of dyslexics, of kids of any age. And, you know, we're a new nonprofit. We've had this grand slam set of home runs in Texas, which we're now replicating across the country. And 2021 really is about rolling out our first uh, parent campaigns. And we have, um, you know, I think really a great strategy for that. And that's what we're working on. So I really appreciate the question. And, um, uh, you know, we're, we're just excited to make, uh, make positive change in this area. Well, I, I definitely uh, follow what is needed for uh, all children today. Uh, and I appreciate what you said. It's not just dyslexics, but every, all kids uh, learn best when they use the, the, the proven scientific method, which uh, unfortunately uh, many uh, educational institutions have gotten away from that. So is there anything else that you would like to share and how can uh, listeners uh, kind of follow you and, and be supportive of what you're doing? Well, um, thanks, Don. You know, uh, anyone who is, uh, you know, got a connection to dyslexia, I would love for them to, uh, you know, first and foremost, just follow us. So we have a series of social media accounts um, and we communicate with, you know, uh, with the world through those as well as an email list. Um, you know, uh, and we, uh, yeah, so the, the, the primary thing is to just follow us because you'll see our programs unfold over the you know, months and years, and uh, that's how you can stay up with what we're doing. And um, you know, then the other way is the same way that is for all nonprofits. It's you know, um, consider making a donation. Uh, we are currently an all-volunteer team, so uh, 100% of our expenses uh, are for programs. Um, and... Uh, you know, but we need to get out of that, um, that situation, uh, you know, in order to scale this, we need to raise enough money to be able to, um, to be able to, uh, you know, hire paid staff and, and accelerate what we're doing. And, you know, we're going to do mostly that mostly through, um, uh, our efforts in grants and corporate donations and with, you know, wealthy donors, but, um, there really is something that everyone can do, which is, um, you know, it is really significant for a nonprofit like us uh, if you just make a donation of as small as $10 a month um, or whatever you can afford above that. But um, you know, having lots of people give us even small amounts of money uh, you know, not only adds up, but it also is predictable. And so we were able to budget on that. And so um, you know, in addition to following us, if anyone can make, uh, again, even as uh, small as a $10 a month donation, um, we would greatly appreciate it. And I can just assure anyone who's listening to this that, uh, you know, we will be very good stewards of your money. And I think that, you know, this represents, from my perspective, the largest opportunity to make positive change in the world that I've seen, because the dyslexia crisis is so costly. And the um, contributions that dyslexics can make to society are so large that if we can just shift this from a negative to a positive, it will unleash tremendous positive uh, changes in the world and reduce a tremendous number of costs to society. So again, the thing I can tell your uh, people or for all the people who are listening that we will be good stewards of your money and we will, um, we're determined uh, to solve the dyslexic crisis. So um, I appreciate you, uh, you uh, having me Don and uh, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Stephen, for sharing all the work you're doing with Impact Dyslexia. Now, for anyone that would like to uh, learn more about Impact Dyslexia, uh, in the description, there is a link to the website and additional information. So thank you again, Stephen. Thank you, Don.